Okay, hi there, it's Jeff here again with another key diagram video. In the last one, we looked at free floating exchange rates. If it's okay with you, let's spend a few minutes thinking about managed floating currencies. Now, this system, a managed floating exchange rate, uh, is a currency system that allows a nation's central bank to intervene often quite regularly in the foreign exchange markets. And of course, that intervention is designed to, to change the direction of the currency's float and or reduce the amount of currency volatility, or both. This exchange rate system is also known as a dirty float. Uh, again, using a drawing on the IMF's annual survey of currency systems, here are six examples of countries that they have assigned or uh, credited as being managed floating systems. So that means the system, the currency is essentially floating day to day, but that central banks intervene to try to manoeuvre or manipulate the value of the exchange rate. So my good examples here are Brazil, South Korea, Chile, South Africa, Turkey and New Zealand. So good examples there to add to your revision notes. Now the two key tools or instruments for central banks if they're looking to manage a floating exchange rate are as follows. First of all, they may well change their policy interest rates. So they might rise or fall, increase or decrease their interest rates because that's designed to influence the net inflow or outflow of hot money. Hot money is short-term financial capital that moves around the world economy looking for the best risk-adjusted rate of return. The other option which we're going to discuss in today's video is direct intervention in the market. So the central bank can buy their currency, their home currency, for an appreciation, and they can go into the market and sell their currency for a depreciation. So let's look at managed floating, again, using supply and demand analysis. That's all you have to do with exchange rates. Let's consider that the central bank wants to depreciate their currency. So the Japanese central bank, for example, might intervene to try to engineer a managed depreciation of the Japanese yen. Now, they could do this, obviously, by cutting interest rates if they wanted to, but also by intervening in the market, by going into the currency market and selling their own currency. So the Japanese Central Bank, Bank of Japan, could sell yen and buy US dollars or buy euros or buy pounds. Selling yen causes an outward shift of supply, which in theory brings down the exchange rate, but it also leads to an increase in the stock of foreign currency reserves, because obviously they're buying dollars, they're buying euros. So there's our diagram showing how a central bank might sell currency to try to bring about a depreciation. Alternatively, they might be aiming to manage a floating currency by appreciating the currency, getting the external value to go up. Well, they could do that by raising interest rates to attract hot money inflows, or they could intervene in the market by buying their own currency. That causes an outward shift of demand, as you can see here. And that, in theory, might be enough <clears throat> pardon me, to cause an appreciation of the exchange rate. Uh, but it does mean, of course, that if you're buying your own currency, you'd be selling foreign currencies. So your reserves of foreign currencies would be falling. There we go. That's how you use supply and demand analysis for a managed floating exchange rate.